weren't just business news, we're news for business people. Good morning and hope you had a good weekend. I'm Alex Matthew and you're watching Daybreak on Bloomberg Quint Live. The headlines. Asian markets extend the biggest sell-off in two years as investors fear more than three rate hikes from the US Federal Reserve this year. 50 individual stock futures start trading on the Singapore Stock Exchange from today. It's a two-way race for Bruce and Steel and as Tata Steel and a JSW Steel-led consortium are the two bidders to submit final bids. Singtel pumps in a nearly 2,650 crore rupees into Bharti Telecom, the holding company of Bharti Airtel, taking its stake to just shy of 49%. And Bosch and Tata, Steel, Tata Motors sorry, are the two nifty companies coming out with their third quarter earnings today. Let's turn to international markets now and US stocks fell sharply on Friday after a stronger than expected jobs report sent bond yields higher. Investors fear that an improving economic outlook will prompt the US Fed to accelerate its rate hike decisions. The major indices recorded their worst weekly performance in two years. Bloomberg's Abigail Doolittle has this report. Friday's Wall Street session was all about a sell-off for the major averages. The Dow, S&P 500, and the Nasdaq all fell about 2% or more. The Dow, well, more than 2%, shedding more than 650 points for its worst day since the Brexit back in June of 2016. So some pretty bearish action there. A continuation of the volatility we've seen all week. In fact, each of the major averages posting the worst weekly performance since early 2016. The sellers taking control. We had had a rally on our hands in 2018. That brought on overbought conditions, so we are now seeing uh, some selling action uh, from those overbought conditions, plus rising rates, pressuring stocks, and disappointing earnings reports. Apple being one such company that uh, disappointed investors relative to the number of iPhones sold back in the December quarter, plus the outlook a little bit disappointing, those shares having their worst week since April of 2016. Alphabet also falling in a big way after missing earnings estimates on rising traffic acquisition or tech cost investors not liking that and the energy complex lots of weakness there that was the worst sector for the Dow and the S&P 500 after Chevron and Exxon Mobil put up messy quarters investors simply not liking that next week investors will be watching to see whether or not rates continue to rise something that would probably continue to pressure a macro sell-off plus a few key earnings reports out from the likes of Tesla Twitter Gilead Sciences and Skyworks that of course is an Apple supplier but Friday's Wall Street session certainly risk off and a sell-off for stocks. In New York, Abigail Doolittle, Bloomberg News. Well, that's a word on the U.S. markets from Friday, but then in early trade today, U.S. stock futures have also trended lower and the Asian markets have opened lower. Let's head across now live to Bloomberg's Rosalind Shin uh, for all the live updates in the Asian markets that have opened so far. Morning, Rosalind. Uh, not the best news coming in from overseas from the U.S., but also a lot of earnings to watch this week. Yes, there are a lot of earnings to watch this week and also central bank decisions. But, you know, we see that uh, although there has been optimism over corporate uh, earnings, this uh, concern about what might be happening on the uh, on the markets in terms of what's happening in the U.S. is obviously translating, of course, here into Asia as well. So we're seeing, just like the U.S., red right across the board pretty much here in Asia as well. So the thing, the Nikkei, the Topics, the Kospi, Hang Seng, which has just opened, all trading lower. The MSCI Asia Pacific Index down by 1.8 percent at this moment. Of course, there could be further to go. Implied volatility is spiking, so we're going to see a bit of a choppiness going on. Equities being tested as the global uh, bond yields basically surging and. Uh, 
topics in here we see is basically heading for the biggest decline in more than two months. Biggest drags there, electronics and uh, the banks. The Hang Seng uh, fell at the open and fell the most in 1.5 years. And uh, big factors, of course, those sizzling US jobs numbers that we saw coming out on Friday. And of course, uh, a hint from the Fed's cap plan, uh, Robert cap plan, that there could be the need to raise r rates more than three times this year. That obviously has invested, have investors all in a tizzy. So we see the yen advancing uh, right now at 109.93 to the US dollar. Shane Oliver at MP Capital Investors saying it's likely that this is all just a correction rather than a severe bear market. But of course, you know, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But yes, as you mentioned, quite a few um, corporate results coming out this week. Mitsubishi, Panasonic, Suzuki, SK Telecom among them. And of course, central bank decisions, including Australia, India, the UK and the Philippines. So we'll be keeping an eye out for those. An eye out for those. Back to you. Thanks so much for that, uh, Rosalind. Let's turn to India now, and uh, Darshan Mehta and Agam Vakil are here as usual to set you up for the day's trade and also to tell you what's happening in the futures and options space. First to you, Darshan, morning. Uh, the sell-off almost all likely to continue. Yeah, yeah, it is, because if you're looking at Asia, this down in trade, the Dow futures uh, are indicating a 200-point negative downtick. And if you're looking at the SCX Nifty, uh, that is indicating a gap down of almost uh, three digits. So, uh, again, the sell-off continues as far as our markets are concerned. So, extremely weak open is something that we can expect. But it's not only, you know, the SCX, it's not only equities, uh, commodities also. But first, let's, let's take a look at the ADRs. And, and come taking cues from what happened in India on Friday, all the ADRs, fell in trade. So HDFC, Vedanta, ICICI, Tata Motors, anywhere between 3 to 5 percent and uh, even counters like so. All the ADRs ended with a negative bias. As far as uh, crude is concerned, for the second day in a row, we've seen more than a 1% cut that's happened even in morning trade. Crude is trading negatively. So if you're looking at crude down almost 1%, again, coming back to the $68 level per, per barrel mark. And even on Friday, the crude was down almost 1.5%. As far as metals are concerned, most of the metals saw a big sell-off as far as LME is concerned. Because look at uh, the only one that didn't uh, fall were lead and tin, which were up 6 tenths of a percent. But look at the sell-off that's happened. Aluminium was down 6 7, 7 tenths of a percent, copper over 1 percent, zinc over 1 percent, and nickel cracked almost 4 percent in trade. As far as China is concerned, copper is trading down half a percent, zinc is trading down half a percent, aluminium and steel are trading down almost 3 tenths of a percent. So there is clear weakness that is coming in, and because of the weakness, there seems to be a little bit of traction that's happening. As far as silver is concerned, silver is up half a percent, uh, surprisingly not enough traction on gold currently. So th this is the basic cue that we are getting in as far as the commodities are concerned. FIs, they bought in almost a 950 crores in the cash market uh, on Friday, but this is the provisional number. And let's see the DII number also. And DII sold in almost 509 crores in the cash market. So on Friday, when the markets crashed, uh, FIs were buyers and DIs were sellers in the market. Uh, India WIX was up almost 8%. So there is, uh, again, uh, you know, a little bit of... Uh, traction that's happening, a little bit of nervousness that's happening in the market and the wicks moving up. Now, look at uh, the sell-off that happened. The Nifty 50 was down almost uh, 200 points, 2.3 percent. But look at the sell-off that's happened on the mid cap and small cap. The mid cap was down almost 5 percent and the small cap was down over 6 percent. And the weakness in both these continue, the small, the broader markets. Real estate cracking 6%, auto track falling almost uh, 3%, uh, Maruti leading one of the big falls on the auto index below the 9,000 mark. What happened as far as the market was concerned, down 50 to 50 points. What contributed? A minuscule contribution <coughs> coming in from the uh, tech pack. But look at this, uh, Reliance, HDFC and HDFC Bank, all of them contributing negatively. And these were primarily the ones that led the rally on the Nifty over the past few weeks. ICICI was down almost uh, 80, contributed an 18-point down take. Uh, 250 points down, another 100 down on the SGX Nifty. Uh, call writers must be having a field day now. They absolutely have Darshan and with the, what we saw it was a lot more writing around 11,300, 400 calls but I'll come to that. Let me start off with what's happened in the, the futures and what we can see is not a very good picture because we've seen longs unwind as far as the Nifty is concerned with 4% decline in terms of its futures. When it comes to the Nifty Bank futures as well, what we're witnessing is another decline of around 7% in terms of its open interest. So longs unwinding across in the Nifty as well as the Nifty Bank futures. That's said, as expected, 
Uh, the India WIX has moved up by as much as 8%, still not above the mark of 16.17, which could be crucial, but still around 15.4 now. Uh, that said, moving in, uh, we're, to we're taking a look at the Nifty put call ratio, which has now fallen to as much as 1.08. Uh, we have also seen a lot of changes in the, the calls and as Darshan was just mentioning, we started seeing a little more activity come down to around the levels of 10,900 and the 11,000 mark. Uh, so we'll be watching out for these levels of course, it's going to be very crucial considering we have seen the Nifty lose the 11,000 mark. And now we have HDL and India Cement which moves into the ban. And on the other hand, gen irrigation moves out of the band. But gen irrigation is one key counter we'll be watching out for because uh, we have seen a lot of activity there along with PC Jeweler, which has seen fresh, uh, a lot of long, longs and winding with 24% decline on Friday. And uh, similarly, when it comes to gen irrigation, we've seen about a 7% decline longs and winding there as well. So a lot of weakness seeping in, especially in the broader markets. And considering we have seen so much call writing, well, the picture doesn't look good for the bulls, at least, at least in the near term. Thanks so much for that, uh, Agam. Uh, let's turn to the rupee and the bond market now. And Salon Saloni Dhanuka has all the updates in those two markets. Uh, morning, Saloni. Good morning, Alex. So, uh, talking about rupee, it was tracking losses in the local equities market on Friday and it ended near two week low against the dollar at 64.06 levels. Now, for the week, the home currency was down by a good 51 paise against the dollar on the back of widening fiscal deficit concerns. Uh, elsewhere, rally in India's foreign exchange reserves continued for the fifth straight week and it touched a record high of 417.8 billion mark for the week ended 26 Jan. While moving on to bond markets, yield on benchmark 10-year bond dropped 4 basis point to 7.56%, while in terms of flows into debt markets, global funds increased their rupee debt holdings for the sixth consecutive session on Friday. They infused close to 450 crore according to NSDL data, while uh, domestically global traders will be turning their attention uh, this week to the RBI monetary policy. Meet analysts are expecting RBI to keep interest rates on hold. However, they are expecting some hawkish comments from the RBI uh, central bank uh, after the budget wherein they indicated widening concerns on the uh, deficit. While on the global front, dollar index snapped seven-week losing streak uh, after uh, monthly jobs data surpassed expectations. The index rose as high as 1% on Friday. However, it ended six-tenths of a percent higher, well above the 89 mark. Uh, in fact, it was the top performer currency on Friday. Other major currencies like Euro, Yen as well as Pound ended lower, over three-tenths of a percent lower against the dollar. On the back of broad-based dollar weakness, well, coming back home, dollar rupee is trading at 64.13 levels against the dollar in the non-deliverable forward market, which indicates a weak opening for Indian rupee in today's trade, Alex. Thanks so much for that, Saloni. Shifting focus now to the commodity space, and Jayesh Kilnani joins in with all the details there. Morning, Jayesh. What are the updates that you're picking up? Morning, Alex. Let me start off with oil prices, which are trading soft uh, in early Asian hours. Uh, now, this is on uh, you know extension of uh, the near one percent fall that we saw for last week uh, after after oil prices posted the best Jan uh, for itself uh, since 2006. Uh, now, the fall was aided by a stronger dollar and also you know uh, you know weakness in the stocks that led to uh, concerns over the shale production that we are seeing uh, picking up. As far as uh, base metals are concerned, most of the base metals ended lower and the fall was largely led by nickel, which was down as much as 4%. Uh, the sell-off was also triggered by a spike in the dollar after we got an unexpected strong US jobs data. Uh, nickel plunged as much as 5.8% uh, you know, and that was the most in over two months. Uh, as far as other individual base metals are concerned, copper and zinc uh, declined more than 1% each, uh, while on the leaders front we had lead and tin, which gained about 6 tenths of a percent each. Now we are seeing mixed use come in uh, from the Shanghai Futures Exchange when most of these base metals are trading with a negative bias except for aluminium which is showing slight bit of uh, positive bias in trade. As far as uh, you know, gold prices are concerned, we saw some bit of decline come about for gold. In fact, it also posted the best uh, weekly loss uh, of 2018. Uh, once again, on the jobs data that we got from the US, uh, trading nearly about uh, 1,333 for an ounce. Uh, now, you know, this is also on the back of uh, speculation of uh, rise in interest rates. Thanks so much for that, Jayesh. 
Moving on to the big story that we had over the weekend, only two Indian steelmakers are now in the race for Bhusha and Steel. Bankers in the know have told Bloomberg Quint that Tata Steel and a consortium of, uh, by, led by GSW Steel have submitted their final bids for the auto-grade steelmakers' uh, auto steel assets. Vishwanath Nair, who broke this story, joins in on the phone line. Morning, uh, Vishwanath. What's the latest that you're hearing? Uh, so, Alex, what we understand uh, through our sources is that uh, for the Bush and Steel assets, there was a bidding process that closed uh, Saturday evening. Uh, now, before the, the bidding process closed, uh, there was there were only two bidders who had submitted their final bids in this matter. Uh, there was Tata Steel, uh, which has been eyeing uh, many of the uh, steel assets uh, which are which are put up for sale under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. Uh, there was also a consortium led by JSW Steel. Uh, so, in this consortium, the other partner, it's a 50-50 sort of joint venture, and the other partner is a fund that is promoted by Piramal as well as uh, Piramal uh, Group as well as uh, Bain Capital. Uh, so these two put together, they will be putting up about 25 to 30,000 crore, uh, just the JSW uh, part of the bid. Uh, that, that is what we understand. Uh, we are not sure how much Tata Steel has bid uh, through the process. The process, uh, if you know, is all fully confidential uh, till Tuesday, which is when the resolution professional will be opening these two bids, and it will be presented uh, later to the bankers with full details. Uh, so, till that point in time, we don't know what uh, the data seal bid is going to look like. Uh, but uh, suffice it to say that this uh, 25 to 30,000 crore that the JSW consortium has uh, sort of pitched is about double of the 15,000 crore liquidation value uh, that Ocean Steel has been found to have. And our liquidation value is exactly the value that uh, you can arrive by liquidating the company uh, over the course of time if the insolvency process fails. Uh, so that is what we know at this point in time, Alex. There were stories that uh, the UK steelmaker Arcelor Mittal had also put in their bid, uh, but uh, a spokesperson for Arcelor Mittal has confirmed to Bloomberg Quint that they did not participate in the process. Right. And any, just uh, quickly, any idea of the timeline that will be followed uh, after Tuesday? So typically, uh, it takes about six to eight weeks before the before the lenders uh, can come up with any kind of uh, decision on the whole thing because I, I'm sure there will be some f uh, form of negotiation that will go on after the bids uh, have been opened and the lenders have discussed it thoroughly with their own boards. Uh, so that should take that much of, uh, amount of time. But if you remember last week, we also broke a story about uh, what the Indian Banks Association has decided as sort of a core uh, guidance for all lenders in that they will only be negotiating with the highest uh, bidder in this race. So whoever has bid the highest will then become uh, a part of the negotiation uh, that will happen with the bankers. Thanks so much for that, Pishi. Thank you. Well, moving on now, automakers have had a good run in January with sales growing in double digits for all companies. While some of it can be attributed to a low base, overall demand has also been quite encouraging. Darshan Mehta is here to take you through all of those numbers. Darshan, uh, positive signs here. Yeah, because uh, most of them have seen decent uh, growth and as you pointed out rightly, it comes on the weak uh, base of uh, demonetization. So the growth uh, numbers uh, will look much better. Now, if you're looking at the January sales, Bajaj Auto saw an auto sales growth of 46%. Hero, TVS and Aishar, as far as the two wheelers were concerned, had a 30% growth that actually came in. So these are as per the company numbers that came out uh, uh, over the weekend and on Friday. Uh, as far as the, the com as far as the four wheelers are concerned, Tata Motors grew almost 43 percent. M and M Tractors grew 38 percent. M and M almost 32 uh, percent. Maruti was the weakest; it grew 5 percent. But remember, Maruti comes on a very very high base uh, itself. Uh, Apart from it, what worked for Maruti, first of all, strong demand from Brezza and Bellino. Uh, these are sold via Nexa and there is significant amount of traction. There is significant even amount of traction that's coming in from the new launches of Tata Motors, that is Tigor, uh, Nexen as well as Hexa. All of them are seeing strong demand and that is why you saw a big jump that came in as far as Tata Motors are concerned. And for the commercial vehicles, there was demand from the logistics and infra company. So that is something that aided the CV makers uh, this time around. For the tool wheeler makers, the strong rural demand uh, was something that was clearly seen. And with the budget being a significant amount of uh, traction that was seen on the rural side, that should probably continue. But uh, as far as Jan is concerned, decent month for auto companies. Right. Uh, we'll leave it at that, uh, Darshan, and we'll come back, of course, to Tata Motors that is uh, announcing its results 
today for the third quarter. The company is likely to post a very strong quarter. Net profit is expected to rise 21% on a year-on-year -year basis, while revenue uh, may see a more than 15% jump. EBITDA is likely to see a healthy growth and margins are expected to sig expand significantly. Now, among the factors to watch for Tata Motors, brokerage firm Morgan Stanley expects JLR to have a Forex loss in the third quarter. Also, a one-time rebate to dealers in China is expected to impact the profit of the company's JV there. Now, on the domestic front, the volumes have grown 29%, but as always, it's not a big contributor to the revenue and the profit, so all eyes naturally on Jaguar Land Rover. Let's turn to the stocks in news now, and Shraddha Babla joins in with all the stocks on her list. What are the number of stocks that you have today, Shraddha? <laughs> Ten, uh, if, you, if I've counted correctly, Alex. To start off with Bharti Airtel, uh, where Singapore Telecommunications said that it will invest 2,649 crores in Bharti Telecom, which is a promoter company. So you might see some positive reaction on the back of this counter. GMR Infra has been focused as well. Its subsidiary GMR Airports will acquire additional 11% stake in GMR Hyderabad International. And that will be for a consideration of 484 Cross. You also have an ET report which suggests that Jay Prakash Ventures has offered to sell its uh, uh, Nigri project to NTPC, so watch out for that name. Another ET report says Mahindra and Mahindra has backed a 110 crore worth order for electric vehicles. Uh, Binani Industries could be in focus again on the back of an ET report which says that bidders are likely to get another shot at bankrupt Banani Cement. You also have Orchid Pharma which could see a significant positive reaction. It's a, a very small and liquid stock but you could see some reaction there. Now this is on the back of an ET report which says that Blackstone, Strides are collabs and Nectar Life Sciences are leading the race uh, for the company and also a Ramchandra group. Uh, has also shown some interest. That apart, Arsia, uh, uh, where the uh, ET report says that they will sell six warehouses uh, to a company and then lease them back uh, to be able to implement uh, asset light models. You could see some reaction there. JBM Auto, where uh, Italian company has terminated its joint venture agreement with the company. However, JBM Auto has said that the JV company will continue with its existing business. Sanghi Industries, they have approved raising of funds via the issue of uh, non-convertible debentures and bonds and lastly Mangalam Organics where the company will buy back 6.74% of its equity at a price of 230 so uh, lots of uh, names to track Alex. Absolutely thanks for that Shraddha and one of the stocks that we've been talking about with regard to stocks in news in the recent past Vakrangi's uh, share prices the losses therein have brimmed over into the fifth trading session on Friday amid reports that the company has come under SEBI scanner for price and volume manipulation. In an interview with Bloomberg Quinn's Darshan Mehta, though, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Vakrangi, uh, Dinesh Nandwana, denied any stock price manipulation and said the company has not received any communication on wrongdoing by the Securities and Exchange Board of India. Listen in. Previously, we are having the, uh, we were having the, we are right now, we are having the 1,500 on the treasury fund. Previously, it was the <coughs> policy that 75% uh, uh, of the company's fund, of treasury fund will be invested into debt fund and 25% will be invested into, may be invested into equity fund. So, we made certain investment. In certain investment, PC Jewelers was also there. We made certain investment. But after when we uh, then data, when we bought the 20 lakh shares, that they come to the uh, NSE website. So, lot of uh, shareholders has asked me, lot of uh, shareholders has objected and suggested you should not do this. And they have given me the, because Vakarangi should focus on the uh, their business only, they are not having the expertise to invest in the equity, directly equity. So, you just see the corporate governance of the company. I immediately uh, called, uh, called to the board of directors. I convinced them, my lot of shareholders are not agreeing on this. So we immediately changed the policy. We immediately changed the treasury policy and informed to the BSC that nowhere in the future, no amount will, in the future will be directly invested into uh, PC dealers or XYZ any equity. So right now we are having the 100% policy, 90% will be invested into directly debt, 
directly and direct in the debt, debt fund and 10% only can be invested equity through mutual fund only. There is no direct investment. So see the just uh, what management has immediately uh, changed its policies of them and there was the objection from the sale. So it's a one day only. After uh, just buying, to, we got the objection, then I immediately called the uh, board director meeting, convinced them this is not a fair according to my shareholders view. So I immediately I changed the treasury policy. So again I am committing now, in future, there will not be any uh, a, a, any directly investment in those. So this is not a serious issue. This is a treasury fund is there. I nothing lost in that. I lo I also invested in the lots of other companies also. I benefited there. So right now I close the thing. I'm in future I'm committing. So I'm assuring you to I will follow the So you, follow so the you, you are an individual, sir. So if you invest in your personal capacity, sir, no one is questioning it. The question arises why are you investing no, no, company no, by the, by, I never invested. I never I never if yeah. See, Mr. I, I, if you see my personal balance sheet, my balance sheet in my personal balance sheet, I am owning only and only Vakrangi share. Okay. I never invested. But as per Treasury policy, Treasury committee is there. Treasury committee is there. If Treasury committee decide to invest into XYZ, so how can I object? There is a report or there is something there, but there is a policy matter. This is not a matter of particular script. When it's share, my, my shareholder didn't object on a particular scheme. They objected the policy. Because Vakrangi management or Vakrangi treasury is not having the expertise in the equity investment. Hmm. You should not you should invest in the debt fund only. So immediately I changed the policy. So why are you focused or everybody is focusing this point to the particular scheme? I am telling you this is policy. So Vakrangi is abide, Vakrangi is a corporate government company, professional run company. We are we run on, on the procedures and policies. So when we change the policy, we will abide the policy definitely in the future. So I am assuring you, I am assuring everybody, we will follow the policies of, we are, we will, we are also releasing shortly capital allocation policy. No, no, sir. So we will do, sir, the, are, are we you, will also take sir, the uh, suggestions from the shareholders. Is Vakarangi, you bought 20 Hello? lakh, uh, sir, you bought 20 lakh shares of PC dwellers. I am asking, are you still holding after I you? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but uh, I, 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 I I don't know a particular which shares they have sold. All this treasury committee has decided uh, decided to not to buy furthermore and liquidate into this quarter. So in this quarter, every every my whole equity will be whole equity will be uh, <coughs> sold out. So I cannot comment on a special shares. No, no, special sir. Script, I, I, which I, I have sold. So I am telling you, I cannot comment. Well, that's a word coming in from the Vakrangi management. But turning to the big brokerage calls of the day, Somit Sarkar has some interesting names for you. Somit? Good morning, Alex. And the big brokerage calls, first we have is Macquarie on Bajaj Auto. Now, they have maintained their underperformed rating on the stock with the target price of 2,900. And they're saying that the third quarter results of the company were lower because the, uh, because the operating performance of the company was lower than estimated. Now, the sales volume grew around 18% in the third quarter, driven by strong growth in three-wheelers and also in the export market. But if you're seeing the domestic mot motorcycle fund, the market share continues to decline as the new models have not sustained the initial momentum. Now, the exports grew in third quarter strongly of a low base and going forward the near term outlook on the three wheelers is positive but the company is expected to see a slow growth in the domestic motorcycle industry in the financial year 2019. Second we have is JP Morgan on Hidalco. Now they have maintained their overweight rating on the stock with a target price of 335. Now in the third quarter it was a miss on from Hidalco on EBITDA and on net profit run. Now the standalone operations of the company did not fully capture the earnings growth according to the brokerage. However, Repayment of the debt continues at the, on the back of the strong cash flow generation. And however, going forward, the upside is limited in the fourth quarter of financial year 2018 because of the price hikes in the coal taken in by Coal India. Also, capital allocation by Hindalco going forward will be a key monitorable according to the brokerage. Third, we have a CLS on Godrej Properties. Now they have maintained their buy rating on the stock, but have cut the target price marginally to 1,058 from 1,078. Now the third quarter results of financial year 2018 were below estimates on lower margins. However, cash flows were good on from the company which led to a fall in net debt. Now, pre-sales continued to surge in the third quarter. It was up around 77%, indicating a major scale-up in progress. Now, project additions also continued in the third quarter of financial year 2018 as smaller players were exiting from the industry. Going forward, Godrej Properties is expected to be a key beneficiary of consolidation and exits of smaller and unorganized players. And also, Godrej Properties remains a top pick of our uh, CLSIC uh, in the real estate sector. Thank you, Amit. 
Now, we've already taken you through a few stories that you'll find on the website. Here are a couple of more that you should consider reading. In the US, Jerome Powell will be sworn in as the new chair of the Federal Reserve today in Washington. In an interview that aired over the weekend, outgoing chair Janet Yellen said a US stocks and commercial real estate prices are elevated, but stopped short of saying that those markets are in a bubble. Now, Reliance Industries will invest 2,500 crore rupees in Assam in retail, petroleum, telecom, tourism and sports, creating 80,000 jobs over the next three years. The company's chairman, Mukesh Ambani, made an announcement to this effect at an investor summit in the state. Well, that's all we have time for on this edition of Daybreak, but all you need to know is up next, so do stay tuned. Thanks for watching. This is Bloomberg Quint.